Alright everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be looking at number 43 of the NFL's greatest players of all time, Alan Page. Let's get into it. The quicker you're here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is... Okay, Alan Page, defensive tackle for the Minnesota Vikings. My neighborhood playing football in the backyard had Vikings jerseys, but they were all number 10, Fran Tarkenton, number 44, Chuck Foreman. My parents had to get me a purple shirt and iron on two 88s. I had the only Alan Page jersey in the neighborhood. It was moth eaten. My mother was mortified to send me out of the house with it. And when I was in second grade, my friend Troy, his father, managed the Holiday Inn in Bloomington. And everybody knew that Saturday night before home games, the Vikings stayed there. I got to the Holiday Inn. And Troy's dad told me, Alan Page doesn't sign autographs, and it just crushed me. I couldn't believe it. And then so the doors open, and all of a sudden Alan Page blew past me, turned as if he'd forgotten to pick up his room key or something, came back, saw this kid in his 88 jersey trembling, and he put his hand on my head as if he were palming a grapefruit or something. <laughs> in my hair, I had some then. I still did. a notebook in my big banana, signed his beautiful autograph, handed the thing back to me, and then went back and disappeared up the stairwell. And I just stood there shaking in this pool of admiration and, and probably urine as well. Wow! Years after, wow! What a story! I told Paige this story of my seeking the autograph from it and my having that only threadbare Alan Page jersey. A few months later, in the mail, I get a three-quarter sleeve white 88 jersey that he had signed to me and said, this is to replace that jersey that you lost when you were eight. I can count on one hand the number of interview subjects that I've, I've gotten a handwritten note from afterwards. So he's Alan a page was he's born a reporter. And raised in that guy must be a journalist. Okay. Canton, Ohio. As a teenager, he worked in construction and helped build the Pro Football Hall of Fame. In 1988, he was enshrined there. <laughs> wow. Nothing else about Alan Page followed a direct path. He revolutionized the defensive tackle position. When he came in, he said the coaches wanted him to kind of man this one square yard of space, his lane. He never found that particularly interesting. And so you'd see him going through all different kinds of gaps. You'd see him swimming around two defenders at the same time. Too fast. I gotta say, it would be fun. It would be quite good not having to worry about anything on offense. Don't worry about dropping the ball. All you need to worry about is getting past your man and trying to get that fucking quarterback. It would be quite cool, I'd say. Him pulling different colored jerseys down and maybe one of those guys stressful. Ball, he'll sort it out afterwards. He looked just huge in uniform with those pads on. But out of uniform, he's a fairly skinny guy. He's run a thousand marathons. You would not think that he was one of the greatest players in the history of the National What? Football. Page is the only defensive, defensive lineman ever to be named league MVP. The relentless The only defensive lineman to ever be named league MVP, really? Football league. Page is the only defensive wow. lineman ever to be named league MVP. What did he do? Set get two sacks a game or something? And at times, even volatile on the field. <laughs> it's gonna bounce back on his head. Mild mannered and cerebral, off of it. He was a ferocious competitor, but cared little about his one career failing, never winning a Super Bowl. It's just it's not a football game. I suppose if it were more than that, it were the the end of the world is spectacular that it's made out to be, then I'd be somewhat more concerned about, you know, winning or losing. He had a level head. I'm going to be on my way back to Minnesota in the law school. And Tuesday morning when I'm in class, I'm just going to be like everybody else sitting there in class. It's not going to be that big a deal. He was studying the law in the locker room as an NFL player. Had this notion of becoming a lawyer since he was a kid. And football stardom unusual for a lot of athletes, didn't interest him. He thought it was kind of silly that people thought he was better than other people because he could play football. And that's one of the reasons he didn't sign autographs for a long time was because he didn't feel like I'm somebody that you should think is special just because I play football. 
Look at him sitting in the snow. Look at that shit. It's like a ski field. It reminds me of a ski field back in Christchurch. It does not look like a football field. The middle of the greatest defense in Vikings history would go on to become a judge on the Minnesota Supreme Court. He doesn't have a single football memento in his office. He has a lot of mementos about Jim Crow and wow. things that remind him of a the judge. power lawmakers and judges and courts and the legal system can have in people's lives and in changing society. And I think that's what he's most proud of and that's the source of his greatest accomplishment. Interesting, interesting to note that he is a judge because, I mean, like I said only a couple of minutes ago, he's, he's, got a, he's got a level head, he's got a good head on his shoulders, you know, nothing was too great for him, no, no occasion was too much, and so he'd most likely be a very fair judge, I'd say. But anyways, that's all we're going to look at for today on Alan Page, number 43 in the top 100 NFL's greatest players of all time. I hope you enjoyed. 42 videos to come, there ain't no time to lose. If you have enjoyed this one, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, please do. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.